What is the scariest movie you have ever seen? For some, it's an easy question. The Shining, The Exorcist, The Cat in the Hat. Answers will vary depending on who you ask. Though when I ask that, I don't quite mean what is your favorite horror movie, but what is a film that genuinely brought immense fear and discomfort through whatever was unfolding before you? Now, I'm not saying in a exploitative manner, because I mean that is the whole point of the exploitation genre. I'm referring to something that's always going to stick with you no matter what solely because of how it delivered this feeling of dread and how you responded to it. For me, it's Yasuso Masumura's 1969 psychological horror, Blind Beast. Masumura is considered to be one of the most important filmmakers of Japanese cinema, as he is one of the precursors of Japan's New Wave era from the late 50s to early 70s. In his early career, after studying film in Italy, he worked as an assistant director alongside the likes of Kenji Mizoguchi, Konichi Kawa, and Daisuke Ito. It wouldn't be until 1957 where he would make his directorial debut with Kisses, a romance that shows how World War II had affected Japanese society, and caused fellow New Wave director Nagisa Oshima to give high praise to Masumura's upbringing. As he continued, he would evolve this idea of displaying humanity in times of turmoil and hardship but with a hint of romanticism in a way that tells the audience that we must come to terms with things beyond our power and control, for it is ourselves that we can only overcome. With films such as his collaborations with actress Ayako Wakao and features like Red Angel. This brings us to Blind Beast, which is based on the 1931 novel of the same name by famous Japanese writer Rampo Etagawa, who actually considered his story to be a failure and even removed parts of the story's latter half whenever it would get republished. The original story followed a dancer who is stalked by a blind artist who traps her in his basement and is convinced to stay after the artist tells her the reason he does art in the first place, only for him to slowly unravel his true nature as the story progresses. While adapting it to film, Masumura stuck very close to the base premise with minor changes, such as the lead woman Ranko, now named Aki, played by Mako Midori, being written as an amateur model and how she gets abducted. In the source material, she is chased down, but in the film, the blind artist, now sculptor, Michio, played by Eiji Funakoshi, poses as a masseur who abducts her with the help of his mother, played by Noriko Sengoku, who has very much taken control over his life. They take Aki to Michio's studio, which is in a basement underneath a warehouse, so she could serve as a muse for his work. Doesn't sound too bad premise-wise, right? Well, what follows is honestly perhaps the most disturbing and soul-crushing sequence of events I've seen in a film thus far. But before I can really get down to that, I want to set the stage for the atmosphere and tension that comes with it. Almost the entirety of Blind Beast is set within this basement, though it's not just any basement. It is a basement that is unevenly distributed, completely composed of an entire terrain of sculptures depicting different parts of the female body of varying sizes, most of which are correlated with the five senses as the walls are covered in eyes, ears, noses, mouths, and so on. And the reason for this is because Michio finds purpose in our sense of touch, as it is what keeps humanity close to our world and each other. It is the sense of touch that allows us to come together as one. This entire basement set piece is honestly very brilliant, and not just from a technical standpoint, as it really gives the impression that Aki is imprisoned in a very surreal nightmare and has no way to escape. Even the few attempts where she tries to escape all result in failure, and she is brought back to this bodily landscape. You truly feel sorry for Aki, because as the story progresses, things only seem to get more and more hopeless. She didn't ask for any of this, and while she does roll with it at first, it is only then she starts to become part of this particular nightmare setting, and not in the way you'd expect. There's also Michio's overly controlling mother, who makes him feel weak and powerless, constantly belittling and manipulating him, which inadvertently rubs off onto him as Michio starts to act the same towards Aki. You can tell he is very troubled by this, and with his mother being the only person in his life, it is very hard to blame him. But of course, everything that is happening is a recipe for disaster that is ready to go south at any moment, making for a ticking time bomb of a dynamic where deep down, 
Michio will be ready to snap. And there is nothing that can be done about it, as things only become worse. Another thing that adds to the unsettling nature of the film is the great lack of music, specifically Hikaru Hayashi's score, which is really only present in select moments of the film to help establish what is to come, but does so effectively. The film takes great advantage of using silence to immerse the viewer into the overall experience, as if we are just as trapped and isolated as Aki. So, I am about to talk about very major spoilers for Blind Beast, some of which can be very triggering for some, so if you don't want to hear any spoilers and want to go watch the film and come back, or you're sensitive to subjects regarding sexual, physical, and mental abuse and violence, click away or skip to the timecode on screen. I'll give you all five seconds. As we enter the film's latter half, the dynamic amongst the three characters take a turn for the worst. For starters, Aki tries playing along as best as she could to try and escape. This leaves Michio becoming more and more obsessed, to the point where Michio's mother begins to grow a disdain for Aki and demands that Michio gets rid of her. Things escalate to a point where the mother tries strangling Aki to death, and as Michio pulls his mother off her, she is thrown back, hits her head, and is instantly killed. And right then and there, something snaps. Aki tries escaping again as Michio attacks her, blaming her for his mom's death, now realizing her plan, and proceeds to force himself upon her out of sheer anger. It is after this occurrence, the burial of Michio's mother under the warehouse floors and isolating themselves for an unspecified amount of days without any food or sunlight, that Aki's imprisonment gets to a point where she develops a romantic infatuation with Michio, and the two begin to form a relationship, which is clearly the result of Stockholm Syndrome. She even becomes blind herself. It is at this point in the film where all hope is completely lost. I actually started to feel depressed when the movie got to this moment. However, I was completely oblivious to how this would further develop. As Aki and Michio constantly engage in sexual activity, the two begin to lose their sense of touch due to overstimulation and resort to inflicting physical harm onto one another. Almost instantaneously, this goes from biting to whipping and eventually stabbing. You watch two people lose all base with reality and escape into a world of their own that only exists within a place that has now become completely removed from the world altogether. And there is no going back. Especially by the time they realize that after losing so much blood and energy from the pain and starvation, that they are on the verge of death. I really wanted to stop watching the film at this point, yet I was won over by my own twisted curiosity. I had just watched two people completely dehumanize themselves to the absolute point of no return, and then it happens. Aki's final request to Michio is to become his magnum opus by dismembering her, to which Michio fulfills this request and joins her in death as well. I... I have no words. I was actually screaming at my television when Michio was cutting her limbs as the film cuts to a collapsing scale model of her. After being invested for so long, you really feel Aki's pain as her life drifts away through her cries. Truly the most upsetting ending to a film I've ever seen, and this moment really solidified Blind Beast as one of the most heart-wrenching films I've experienced. After its release, Blind Beast was met with a good amount of praise, not just because of how it handled its material and how shocking it was, but was considered a high point in Masumura's career as his style was developing. The thing about Blind Beast is that while it is extremely disturbing, it doesn't go completely overboard in trying desperately to scare you. Its sexual content is by no means pornographic, and its violence is nowhere near being gratuitous. It's a movie that comes off as being very real, and that is easily its strongest suit. And separating the creep factor from it, 
This is a great film. The pacing is very smooth, the performances are all fantastic, and the cinematography is just excellent. All of these elements, plus the tragic characters, all mesh together in a truly unforgettable narrative. I would easily consider Blind Beast to be one of the greatest horror films ever made, and it is a shame that not enough people talk about it. But thanks to Arrow Video, the film is readily available on Blu-ray for anyone curious, and for rent on YouTube. While I do recommend it with caution, Blind Beast is a movie that deserves way more love. And honestly, as freaked out as I was while watching, I am so glad I sat through the whole thing. It was totally worth it. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I want to give a big shout out to my channel members and patrons. If you like what you see, consider supporting the channel on Patreon, where you can get early access to videos and exclusive content. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and have a happy Halloween.